Welcome back. Now for your five-day weather forecast, we go to outside to Raul Pinto. It's getting colder and colder as we set deeper into winter. Don't forget to check your winter tires, your gloves, your chimney and your hot chocolate. Here's your five-day weather forecast. Today, the morning showers will continue all day with a high of 10 and a low of minus 3. On Saturday, some gusty winds will blow trees with flurries and high of 1 and a low of minus 8. Sunday will be a cold day. There will be lots of clouds and a few flurries with a high of minus 5 and a low of minus 7. Starting off next week, Monday will bring even more flurries and high winds with a high of 1 and a low of minus 2. And if you dislike the weather pattern already, it looks like you'll be out of luck as we see more flurries again on Tuesday with a high of 2 and a low of minus 4. That's all for your 5-day weather forecast. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Raul. Turning now to national and international news, the Supreme Court of Canada has unanimously voted to ban pharmacy chains from selling their own generic version of prescription drugs. Canada's top drugstore chains argued against province of Ontario regulations that stopped the companies from selling their own generic drugs. The court ruled today that the province did have the authority to institute the rules. The justices said the 2010 regulations were brought in to control the cost of prescription drugs. In Latvia, 47 people are dead after the roof of a grocery store collapsed in the city of Riga. The Fire and Rescue Service says an additional 35 people are injured, with 28 in hospital. The death toll is expected to rise as more people may be trapped under the rubble. The reason for the collapse is still unknown. Rescue and police officials say it could be poor construction design flaws of the building. An oil pipeline has exploded in eastern China, killing 35 people. The pipeline sprung a leak, then caught fire hours later as workers tried to repair it. 166 people are injured, and the nearby sea is now contaminated with oil. The exact cause of the explosion is under investigation. The death toll from the monster typhoon that devastated the Philippines is now over 5,000. That's a big jump from yesterday's numbers, which sat just over 4,000. Roughly 23,000 remain uninjured and over 1,500 are still missing. The two Canadian Greenpeace activists that have been held in Russia have finally been released on bail today. Paul Ruziki of Port Colborne, Ontario and Alexander Paul from Montreal were among the 30 people arrested two months ago. The activists were in the Arctic protesting anti-oil drilling in Arctic waters. All 30 face hooliganism charges with possible sentences of up to seven years. And now with your sports news, here's Natalie Stoberman. Thanks, guys. Now, did you think Lamar Odom hit rock bottom when he admitted to drug use and cheating on his wife? Breaking news alert. TMZ Sports leaked a video of Odom where him and childhood friend Jamie Sanguthi were freestyling about drug use and cheating on his wife, Khloe Kardashian. So to my man, he knows all of them. Uh-huh. I know all of the chicks. Not the I know all of the tricks. Prior to the video, Odom has been in talks with the LA Clippers about returning to the NBA. Last night, the Nashville Predators hunted out weak Maple Leaf defense and snapped their two-game win streak with a 4-2 win over the Leafs. Peter Holland got the blue and white to an early 1-0 lead in the first period, and the Leafs went downhill from there. Nashville buried the Leafs with three goals in the second period, and in the third, Kadri scored in his first game back from suspension, but Preds rookie Craig Smith netted his second of the game. Now here's what head coach Randy Carlisle had to say. Uh, I think our team, uh, they all fit into the same category for us. We were flat after the first period. We didn't seem to have any energy. We didn't seem to have any enthusiasm. Uh, and it just displayed that out on the ice surface, and I think he fit in. The Grey Cup is on Sunday in Saskatoon, and the Toronto Argonauts will be nowhere near the excitement. And adding insult to injury, no Argos were selected in the annual CFL Player Awards last night. Now the top awards were for Brett Jones, the center for the Calgary Stampeders, as he was named this season's outstanding rookie. Alouette's linebacker Kyrie's Hebert took home the Tom Pate Award for his philanthropy.
But the big award went to Calgary's John Cornish, who's the first Canadian in 35 years to be named the Outstanding Player. Major League Baseball is mourning the death of MLB Players Association head Michael Weiner. Weiner passed away yesterday, only 15 months after being di diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. Weiner's passing has been trending on Twitter with condolence tweets from players like Tori Hunter and Jose Bautista and from other fans. Weiner was 51 when he died. That's all for sports. I'm Natalie Stoberman. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Natalie. After the break, we'll get the latest in entertainment from Sandra DeGrandis. Jackman has a cancer scare and Vince Vaughn visits a sperm bank. I'll have all that and more in your entertainment update. 